hold up, stop, stop everything. Yeah, stop, stop the party, stop yeah, the party. Yeah. Welcome back to another oh. episode of the 85 South <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. Hey. Come on, man. Hey. It goes without saying. Hey. You can look around the room. We got a whole different setup, bro. Uh, mm. Bro, I don't even want to get no introduction because I really feel like I'm in the I'm in the dungeon family today. Uh, oh, we in the dungeon. Somebody needs to introduce us oh. as the dungeon family. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. No, man, we got some real A Town legends. A T L A T A. And when I say A Town legends, I don't mean they just legends. Bro, these are some of our musical heroes that gave us that soul food. At the exact moment when people stop dancing, still standing. Yes, sir. One of my favorite groups all day. We still standing, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking about Sesame Street, okay? Yeah. I'm talking about we got CeeLo, we got the Lumberjack, uh -huh. we got Paul and the East. Yeah. 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 Cut the motherfucking intro, J O N. Now, now we the hat. Now, Gip, Gip came through a couple times and gave us the full warning. I uh -huh. seen it. That the mob come. I was like, we didn't give him. Like, just trust me. Like, I'm bringing the whole everybody. I ain't believe him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did. <laughs> then he came back. He was like, I'm telling you, we come. I was like, man, whenever. Mm -hmm. Now we got y'all here in the trap. Got the motherfucking mob. Okay. Hey. It's the first mob. And that's what we use our platform only. for, man, is to show love to people that we love while they can still hear. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. While they can listen. Man, for real. Like, I know Carlos, like, I'm a big CeeLo Green fan. But, uh -huh. like, the rap, the you as an MC, I wasn't hip to like that. Los put me on how raw you were as an MC. Like, all y'all together, I know all the songs, but, like, I wasn't as in tune with you know the fact that you really got down like that, like my shit is the is the the, the eccentric CeeLo Green. Yes, I know all that shit. Yes, Everybody sir. that's grown got skeleton bones. They yeah, gotta get in the way. way. Yeah. 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 That's all that something choose not to say. Uh, that's uh, my uh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, pull over with your girl. Fuck something in the back of the car. The I'm a freak. freak. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm so excited. And then came in here. So, like, being as though y'all came up together, my first question is, like, did y'all ever, did, did y how did y'all get to know what each person's style was to make it fit? Because this, this is an amazing conglomerate of talent, so how did y'all make that work? With all due respect, I gotta, I gotta uh, direct that question to these two gentlemen right here because they are the founders of Goody Ma. This begins with these two gentlemen right here, Kujo Goody, OGT Mo Goody. Mo Goody. Yeah. yeah. Give him a brief, a brief synopsis of well, how this thing started, sir. Please. Well, you you asked about like how we how we came up with like our, the style. Yeah, like how y'all right? make it all work? Cause you know what I mean. Man, I mean, really, man. I just think that man, all of us wanted to, you know, what I'm saying, put Atlanta on the map, man, at the time because, you know, what I'm saying, we was influenced by niggas in New York, you know, what I'm saying, the West Coast, you know, what I'm talking about Texas. All them type of folk, man. We was influenced by Cypress Hill, all them type of people. So, then the type of people that we listen to, man, you know what I'm saying, coming up in, in hip hop. So, I can, I can remember me and Timo listening to Naughty by Nature all the time, listening to Cypress Hill, listening to goddamn Q, and just getting our skills together, man, just homing everything together, man. Then we fucked around and made the first Goody Mob song called It's a Goody Mob Thing You Wouldn't Understand. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? And that never did came, come out. And that was produced by my partner, um, Ed X. Right, Ken Folk? So that was our first Goody Mob song. So, you know what I'm saying? We was fucking around, got down, had some songs together, man, and we were looking for some, some more tracks. So we pulled up at the dungeon, you know what I'm talking about? Fucking with goddamn Rico Wade and goddamn, goddamn Ray Murray, goddamn Sleepy Brown, started getting some more tracks. So we started goddamn homing our skills even more 
coming to the dungeon because then nigga just felt like, man, this is what we going to do. Nigga ain't finna get no job, you know what I'm saying? Nigga ain't finna play football, so shit, man, let's go and see what's going down, man. Then we fucked around and got on that Southern Player Listed, Cadillac Music, man, mm -hmm. with Outkad and them. So me and T-Mo was on Call of the Wild, Gilbert and CeeLo was on Get Up, Get Out and Get Some, but shit, we was still, we been grinding in the trenches, so we was just waiting on our time to step up, you know what I'm talking about? Waiting on our time to get our uniform out the locker and get that shit dirty. Okay. And that's kind of like what it was, you feel what I'm saying? So we was influenced by everybody, man, the whole hip hop, man. It was just time for Atlanta to stand up, man. It just so happened the ball jumped in our court, bro. Right. Get Up and Get Out was the first CD I ever had. Whoa. Whoa. First CD I ever had. I got the CD player for Christmas. We stopped right here at the West End Mall. And I ran up in there, and that was the first CD I got. You know, this one, the single was about eight dollars, <laughs> right? Right. Because it had the original, the clean version, the instrumental. Mm -hmm. Then it had an acapella on that. The motherfucker had six tracks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember when we was young at the West End Mall. They had the Sunshine Department Store. Y'all remember that? Yeah, yeah. The Sunshine Department Store had Sears, the big Sears and Roebuck over there. Oh yeah. Was now I was just gonna say, man, the way we make it work is that you know we all just got a real mutual respect for each other. You know what I mean? And allow each other our, uh, artistic creativity. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just as men and as our creators and as artists. You know what I mean? And we real, we really true to that. Right. We that first. You know what I mean? And I know sometimes we 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 too much of that. So that's why we got to balance with having good managers in place. You know what I'm saying? We having good producers in place like Organized Noise and other people that we work with. You know what I mean? So the way that's. It's just really like a natural type thing with us. It's, right. it's natural. It, it, it's organic. So mm -hmm. even though y'all was the OGs, what made y'all embrace the young ones and be like, you know what, let's turn this into a group situation? Well, really, um, that, that, to be honest with you, man, I don't, I don't like to make up stuff because it's hard to remember to lie. But um, the truth is, Ian Burke, you know what I mean? We, we were all featured on Outkast's first record, Southern Playlistic. Everybody was just hot and ready to go. You know, we were ready to put our music out. You know, me and Cujo had already recorded 18 songs then. You know, and Gilt and CeeLo were working, doing, you know, Gilt was with East Point Chain Game, we're ready to do some solo. CeeLo was um, DJ Wynn, you know, and, and, and DJ Wynn and with uh, Tyrus McClure, so he was grinding, doing stuff. He was ready to bust, you know what I mean? So to make it really work, Ian Burke came to us and was like, you know what? Why don't y'all just all come up under the Goody Mob umbrella, get in the door with that, and then you can kind of break off into whatever entities that y'all got going as far as the Lumberjacks, me and Cujo Goody, uh, CeeLo Green is a solo artist, Gilbert is a solo artist. So it was already pre-planned in the beginning. You know what I mean? We already had the idea that everybody wanted to do their own thing one day, but we were going to come in and sign the deal and get the deal and get the relationship built off Goody Mob. Mm -hmm. you know what, I mean? mm -hmm. what it feel like moving back as the mob again in 2021? Just is it just like picking up where you left off and just finding that stride? Uh, um, I think it was just more of a more more of a, a concentration this time because we felt like we was in we was in a pandemic. It was the first time all of us been home in a long time. First time all of us being able to get in the studio or organize noise. And I think we took our conversation that was on the phone and just started putting it in the music. Once we did that, I think that it was just like riding a bike. Because we had a real, we had a real, at the end of the day, during the pandemic, cell therapy all of a sudden just started growing as a song. Because it was like people started going back and looking at the actual lyrics and studying the song and saying, man, y'all brought this information 20 years ago. And it's now, we actually living in the pandemic. So with that being said, it was like after that, it was like, let's finish these songs, put them out and see where we're going to go with this. But this time we had an actual target. Mm -hmm. The pandemic, the way we was living. I mean, what was going to be the new world? This is the new world we're living in. So with that being said, it gave us an actual uh, 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 a plane to work with where actually we probably didn't have a target before then. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think that right now, the world, with the world being that if we was all locked in our house, I think this was the only time that I think it was supposed to happen like this. This was when Goody Ma was supposed to come back because it was like, it, it was a need for Goody Ma. Mm. Well, we just came out to it too. So we was still goddamn lit. Y'all still was going out together? We was still mm -hmm. ready, man. I mean, shit, bro, I mean. Yeah, we had that th third that. leg of that tour that was uh, defaulted because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. wow. yeah. Man, we had just got invited to the uh, NASCAR event where um, Bubba Stewart 
was coming with uh, Richard Petty. And mm -hmm. they invited us to come down to the pit, man, and everything. And that particular event was the beginning of the pandemic. They, they canceled that, and that was it for NASCAR. Man, no that lets you know how deep y'all run. They invited y'all to a NASCAR, man. Yeah. Right? Yeah. NASCAR, the NASCAR, need it. Uh, Who's that peeking in my window? Who's that? Uh, <laughs> Who's that at the door? <laughs> hey, it was our 25th anniversary too, man. It'll be the who? Yeah. 25 years. <laughs> so man, we were like, man, no, man, we gotta have some new music for our fans, man, and like. We ain't really never stopped writing, man. I never stopped putting music out. You know what I'm saying? It's just that it's just been on the independent, on the download. You feel what I'm saying? Because the major record labels, man, we ain't really fucking with them no more like that. You know what I'm saying? And why is that? What what experiences? Being you know, it's a bunch of new artists out here now. What what advice or experiences have y'all had to make you make that statement right there? I mean, just owning more of your material. That's what I say. There you go. Owning right. more of your material, man, and don't be so eager to sign shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Don't be so eager to sign shit, man. Get get a lawyer to look over that shit for you, man. And keep your publishing. You feel what I'm saying? We did that. You know what I'm talking about? Dealing with the face records. That's one thing about them niggas. They educated us on a lot of shit. You know what I'm talking about? They put us in interview classes, man, so we knew what type of stuff to say in front of the cameras and what not to say in front of the cameras. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? But like right now, man, shit, it's open season, man, with streaming and everything. You just about say what you need to say, you know what I'm talking about? No, I'm not that get yeah. it. So, yes, sir. so even being in that in that dungeon family area, like, cause niggas don't understand. Niggas don't only think they can like being in that atmosphere where everybody is at this one location, how was that just being around all this musically like talented motherfuckers? Man, that shit was like resident camp to me, bro. You know what I'm saying? No mama, no daddy to tell you what to do. You ain't gotta worry about going to sleep. Man, we stayed up all night, you know what I'm saying, listening to tracks, man. Tracks might be on repeat all night long. Nigga, wake up, tracks still going, you know what I'm saying? Raps playing off in your head, you know what I'm talking about? We couldn't really record down there, but shit, we honed our skills up in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So, man, it was good being around niggas from Southwest Atlanta, niggas from East Point. I'm from Northwest Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? Then we coming together and just, man, just comparing notes, man, just comparing how you saw life, you know what I'm saying, from from your point of view. And we were still like in our 20s, yeah. you know what I'm saying, 26, or uh, shot of what, 23, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So we were some we were some young um, Southern pioneers, man, getting this shit out of the ground, you know what I'm saying? Putting yeah. this shit on our back, we're outcasts, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to ask y'all this, as a collective, as the group, when y'all came in contact with that book, that Behold a Pale Horse, mm the impact that it had on everybody. Like like you said, I want to hear it from everybody, you know, point of view. Like, you remember that, that when that moment happened? Absolutely. We've been talking about it as of late, man. Just, yeah. uh, just readdressing it. Uh, but let me see, man, we, what, was it, uh, was it um, DARP? Was that DARP? So what was, what was we doing up there? TLC. TLC, okay, so. You know, and Buster Rhymes doing whatever they doing next door, and you know, just faithfully he would just kind of come by and say like, "Your brothers, look at me like I just want to pass on some, you know, some some good information that could be of use." I'm saying you feel me like you know he was just really, uh, really a, you know a gentleman. You know what I'm saying you feel me like, and you know we was always big fans of his too. So I was like, damn. I mean like okay. I forgot how I ended up going in whatever order, but like Big Rube, who's our resident, um, you know, spiritual advisor and fucking philosopher, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. of course, it's, it's only right that he get the book first. I mean, like he interpreted and, and, and so on and so forth. So you think, you're talking about three or 400 pages uh, worth of reading and shit, man. Like, so it's, it's 12 or 13 of us living over there at the time. So he got it first. Everybody was patient for that for that time. You know what I mean? Like, and everybody was eager, mm -hmm. you know, for the information because Buster Rhyme had already endorsed it. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's the way that he, it's the way that he presented it to us, man. Mm -hmm. It just really, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I was really intrigued about, you know, about it. You know what I mean? So, so you know, we would we would go, we would do do intervals over there. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I would live over there for maybe two weeks straight and then go man, home and man. shower. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Come back. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I remember taking the book home with me and reading it while I was away and then bringing it back, you know what I'm saying, like, and passing it on. But, like, that was it, though, man. We was young and just kind of just, like, uh, just just open, you know what I mean? Like, and uh, just, you know, seeking the knowledge, you know what I mean? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Can I, can I say what the book about? Yeah. What is it about? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I thought you was going to tell him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm so intrigued now. Like, <laughs> what is this book? Like, I need this motherfucker. Okay, so, so this is a textbook. The, the right? book is called, it's called Behold a Pale Horse. And um, I don't even Heard know if it's still book. in print. Bill you know what I'm saying? Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, William Bill Cooper. Bill Cooper. Yeah, they did. They yeah. did. So it was just it was just foreseeing, you know what I mean, like, you know, current events like, you know, vaccines, you know, pandemics, quarantines, mm, uh, marking, you know, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. chipping and things of that nature. So, you know what I mean, uh, plagues and so on and so forth. So it's almost like, you know, when it's so uh, when it's so post dated, like it's almost like conspiracy theory. You know what I right. mean? And so you look at it almost like it's like reading like a Stephen King novel. It's like it's horrific. You know what I mean? Like it's terrifying. It's like yeah. shit, like this shit could really happen. So we were just, you know what I mean? That was the inclination. I mean, like, you know, like, you know, um, it was this new information that we were just excited about. You know what I mean? Like, and I just think, you know, even before that, like, I got, the, both my mother and father were ministers, you know, so I have that back, back, background, you know, guilt, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, was a member of the, uh, the, the Nation of Islam, you know what I mean? So, right. you know, we were already bringing, you know, um, ex and then of course, and then we just men, you know what I'm saying, like, you feel right. me? And one thing about it is, I feel like we were, we were mature enough, you know what I'm saying, even in our adolescence to be, have a deeper sense of significance and appreciation for the opportunity and the people around us, you know what I mean? Like, because how this all happened is we all knew each other from different places, like, I mean, like, uh, these guys went to, they graduated together, went to high school together, you know what I'm saying, you know, um, and they graduated with my sister, so my sister grew up with them, you know what mm -hmm. I mean, it was in their class, so, but, um, I grew up with Mo, you know what I'm saying, like, Mo, we, I know Mo since nursery school, but he's like three years older than me, you know what I'm saying, like, you know what I'm saying, and I've known under 3,000 since elementary school, we went to, we was in third grade together, we went to Sarah Smith Elementary, you know what I'm saying, so, it was, it was dope. I knew that it was something really significant and special about us being brought together because we knew each other from different places. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know, like I had just, I hadn't seen Dre since elementary school. We ended up bumping back into each other going to Frank McLaren Alternative School in College Park, mm -hmm. which is a school for dropouts or, you know, people who have children or women, you know what I mean, you know, like trying to go back and get their, you know, the GD their, yeah, uh, what happened. Mm -hmm. So that's what it was. I mean, so me and Dre had both dropped out of school. I hadn't seen him since elementary school. You know, we just, you know, rebonded, you know, so just by talking about music. We was fans of, uh, uh, Tribe Called Quest and DOS Effects and that kind of shit at the time, so blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, so that's how that shit happened, you know what I mean? Um, and I introduced him, uh, Kujo mentioned DJ Wynn early, God bless the dead. You know, I started with a group called GA Style, you know what I mean, like, you know, but he did, he did Outkast first demo because I introduced him to, to, to them. I, I, excuse me, I introduced them to him. And so anyway, we went to school one day, they just came up back up there one day, he was like, yo, your dude is cool, but we met some other dudes, like, you know, he was talking about organized noise. And I was like, all right, my nigga, like, you know, like, that's dope, you know what I mean? Um, damn, man. I get the rambling, man. Like, nah, but nigga, we this nigga, we like saying the story, bro. I'ma try to forget. I'm, 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 my bad, man. Like, nah, no, no, nigga, do you? Nah, 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 so you you could have said anything. anything. Then we stopped, got some chicken. Uh, it was right. cool. It was cool. I was about shit. to ask Gib if you know how I make bean pies. Okay. I'm excited. <laughs> so look, so look, man. So check this out. <laughs> check, check, check this out, bro. <laughs> so B, B and J D, Killer B and King J D. They were, they were the homies. They was the hustlers out the neighborhood. And so we all went to high school together. Me and Cujo, we didn't battle each other, but we had a cipher at a mutual friend named Glenn Cook. OG Cook. He just came home, man. Did 12 years, man. Welcome home, OG Cook. Welcome home. You know Welcome home. But anyway, his house was the thing to do in high school. You know what I mean? Like, you know. The palace. Uh, so it's always, you know, Stacks and stacks and cases of beer and you know I me mean, the whole shit. So we go over there and get drunk and get the brawling and you know what I mean and you know fucking talking shit and rapping <laughs> and shit like that. So anyway, that's what we that was uh, every day over, over you know over, over over his crib. So anyway, I I I had heard Cujo that could rap, Cujo and T through Killer B. He was uh, he was the he was the hustler in the neighborhood, but he, he ended up being my manager. So he had they demo. Man, goddamn. That's real. <laughs> that right? Go ahead, nigga. Like <laughs> you the type of call the nigga be like, I'm Everybody talking to you. <laughs> like, Go ahead, nigga. You got me on the phone, look, nigga. Not, <laughs> I'm just trying to, I don't know if y'all want to talk about some specific shit. You just want to know. No, nigga, this shit is beautiful. This, this is, is history, this nigga. History. Nigga don't know this shit. Okay. Nigga don't know this how y'all came about. All right, so check this shit out. So, yeah, that they, nigga they, they stand in there. Goddamn, Cujo a legend. You know, street legend. You know, <laughs> allegedly. You know, 
and I'm uh and I'm on the way up making a name for myself too. You know what I'm saying? So they was the lumberjacks. He played it for me, so when I ran up on them, uh, Joe said, I heard you can rap. I said, I heard you can rap. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, but Joe was also goddamn voted most attractive in high school, so my sister used to be like, ooh, really nice. Watch out, man. Watch out. Pretty boy Floyd, man. Y'all gonna find that yearbook from his class. Pretty boy Floyd, man. You should have never said that. You know they gonna find it. They gonna find that shit. Pretty boy Floyd, So I had already heard of the legend of Willie Knight. You know what I'm saying? Like, not only was he like the greatest man, but he was infamous. But a real brawler on top of that. So they're like, damn. You know what I mean? So. Anyway, <laughs> who won the battle, nigga? It wasn't no battle. We just kind of went back and forth. Just like a showcase. Well, um, yeah, I guess because we, I mean, this is a big dog. Like we, we, we just, it was just hood shit. You know okay. You feel me? Like we all friends. Everybody from high school. It's a cut party or something. Like right. we coming from somewhere. Yeah. So it was just like <laughs> yeah. back then. This one got them DJ Quick album was banging. Uh, um, Born and raised and, and come to, but it was that instrumental that it's called Quick Groove. Quick oh, Groove. Yeah. Boom, doom, 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 yeah. And y'all niggas rapped over that. Other day. You just did. Yeah, you yeah, 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 a G. <laughs> yeah. So we rapped over that. Okay. Man, That's a hard ass album. I might do this shit in segments, man. Like, let somebody else talk, man. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> tell it, so, Joe, y'all battle it, over right? the Joe, y'all, Joe, take it from there. Y'all battle over the Quick Groove. Oh, man, a lot of that shit. Yeah, we did, we battled over the quick instrumental, man. Um, and I think I remember Git was there, man, and um, that was the first time we seen somebody kind of rap and sing at the same time. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I think later on, man, we took a trip to the dungeon, man, and um, that's when everybody just started corralling together. You know what I'm saying? But like you were saying, with the uh, with the pillar, the, the the white the, the white horse or whatever the name of that book was, oh, behold, the behold a pale horseman. Back in the '90s, man, you know. People was just getting introduced to, you know what I'm saying, new information, you know, at the time, you know what I'm saying? And you didn't really hear no type of information like that coming out of Atlanta, you know what I'm saying? The only thing you kind of really heard was like, like uh, strip club music, you know what I'm saying? Underground gangster music, you know what I'm saying? Like Hard Boys and Sammy Sam, all that type of stuff. So you really weren't hearing that type of stuff coming out of Atlanta. But when we got a hold of that book and then we got a hold of other information about the New World Order, Back then it was like VHS tapes out, you know what I'm saying? Like right now, all you got to do is go to Google and just type that shit in. You can pull it up. You can pull it up. So it wasn't really like that back in the 90s when we was coming out. It was just VHS tapes that I was over some girl's house, man, and they, they was just looking at some stuff on a VHS tape. And I was sitting down just writing some raps or whatever. I think later on that day we were supposed to have been going to, to the studio or whatever. But so that shit just bled off into, the, into what I was writing. Then went to the studio, organized noise, had the cell therapy track playing. And I was like, well, shit, man, let me goddamn fuck with that shit for a minute. So that cell therapy came on. Then we had a, that hook came from a long time ago with me and Timo was doing the lumberjack thing, man. Like, pow, nobody now. Who's that peeking in my window? Mm -hmm. But that was like some real kind of like gangster shit, man. And they just let slide, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. them niggas didn't really know what, the face didn't really know what they had, man. You know what I'm saying? Until they really soaked in that. These niggas from the South talking about some New World Order shit, you know what I'm saying? So behold the pale horseman shit, you know what I'm saying? Let's talk to them guys, see what they know. And that beat, man, that's one of the best beats Crazy. ever. I don't even, I mean, that's top five beats in hip hop. Ding, 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 ding. Well, it's, it's like, what? Too, bro, I be so what? high, you know, my favorite part is what? the little shit that be like, <laughs> <laughs> That's cold, Thank man. Yeah, so, Gil, man. man, do you know how to make bean pie? No, I don't. Damn. <laughs> I, I mean, I was gonna ask you to make me one. Them shit's good. I never got to that. You never got to that deep no, into it. I was, I was brought in by Conrad Muhammad, so I Whoa. was kind of rolling with the gangster. Oh yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, my, I had two uncles in the Nation of Islam, yeah, man, so man, I know I, how serious was, it was. I was kind of rolling with him during that time, and it was serious during that time because that was the time that he kind of like was going at it with the nation. Uh -huh. So it was kind of like I got brought into it where. I had to choose a side, and once I had to choose a side, I just said, hey, I'm going to let music be my guide. So as far as being in the nation, when I, when I got in the nation, Cool Lace was my, my teacher. Cool Ace. Cool Lace was a teacher in the mosque. And I, I went to the mosque on Aspen Street. Brother, Brother Tony, Ryan who Lace. run L.A., that was my teacher then. That was who running the mosque in, in, in the West End. So for me, like, 
The nation taught me discipline. I used to go to school every day with my, with my nation outfit on. I used to have silver rings on on every finger. And I just thought that it was just, at the time, like it was just giving me a way of not thinking like how I was taught. That was, I think that was the first time in my life I started saying, I'm gonna rebel against what I taught, what I was taught as a child. So that's when I started getting them little books. I mean, I would start bringing them books around my bit mama and I'd be like, bit mama, Hey man, what uh, what Santa Claus got to do with toys? And she'd be like, "Boy, you better get out of here with that bullshit." <laughs> <laughs> hey, Sam, it's your boy DC Young Fly. We all shop online, and we've all seen that promo code field taunt us at the checkout. Yes, but thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past, okay? Honey is the free browser extension that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on all the free saving. Y'all know y'all like saving. I'm talking about every coin. So I was scrolling on, you know, Honey, you know, doing my thing, right? And I'm trying to buy some shoes. You know how I get down. Got to have the classes. And man, I ain't even gonna cap. And I hit that coupon button, honey, drop that thing on down. <laughs> Thank you, honey. You dig what I'm saying? It's literally free and installs in a few seconds, y'all. Get honey for free and join honey.com slash 85 south. And by getting this, y'all, you'll be doing yourself a, a favor by saving some money and supporting this podcast. That's joinhoney.com slash 85 south. So make sure you go download honey.com and use the promo code 85 south. Hey, I'm Carlos Miller. Life hasn't been easy lately, but looking, feeling, and smelling your best doesn't have to be hard. With the short quiz, Hawthorne makes grooming for the modern guy almost effortless. Hawthorne is a premium grooming brand that tailors your personal care routine to your unique profile. At the end, I got an essentials bundle with all the products tailored to my body type and lifestyle. First, you take a quiz. They ask you things like, do you smoke? Do you have oily skin? Do you have dry skin? And stuff like that. High quality self-care products tailored specifically to your needs from Hawthorne. Looking your best has never been easier. Hawthorne takes the risk out of shopping for personal care by giving you free shipping on your order and returns. If you don't like the products, they'll even retailer them based on your feedback. That's H-A-W-T-H-O-R-N-E dot C-O, promo code 85SOUTH. Take Hawthorne's quiz today and get started on your personalized self-care routine by going to hawthorne.co and use promo code 85SOUTH to get 10% off the first purchase. So go to the website, use the promo code, take the profile quiz, and start getting your skincare routine together. They got beard cream lotions, moisturizers, all types of stuff, you know, so you can feel good about yourself the way I be feeling good about myself. I'm walking off because I'm so beautiful from the products that I bought. (laughs) 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 So it it was like that kind of shit. When she started kind of like, I ain't into that, but I started saying, if you ain't into it, it's something about it. Mm -hmm. It's Mm -hmm. the truth to it. Mm -hmm. And it was like, even when I started thinking about Valentine and what an egg got to do with a rabbit, you know, I started just thinking about this shit started making sense. I was like, wait a minute now, somebody give me. So when I started going to Alabama, talking to my other grandmama, I was like, shit, I can't eat no pork no more. She was like, you don't want your pig ear no more. I was like, shit, I can't eat them no more. Elijah Muhammad said that ain't good no more. Mm-hmm. And she was like, who Elijah Muhammad? Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and, my thing was anything that they rebelled against, I was drawn to. Mm-hmm. So the story and, and the structure, first of all, when I found out Elijah Muhammad was from Georgia, that was something to follow. But the first the first book they gave me to study was Eat, Eat the Live. Yeah. 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 Eat the Live. Eat the Live. Yeah. I never heard that before. I never I, I never I was never taught that information before. And then when I read the Malcolm X book, that turned me out. Yeah. The Eat to Live, I had to read that shit when I was a little boy. My Uncle Bird gave me that book. Eat once a day. 
That's it. Like, and it, it's it's so much information in it. I advise anybody to read it. But just the way that they used to run their program was so crazy. Like they'd go out and work all day. They'd be out all day, and then they'd come home, and the women would have the meal prepared for the day, and that would be the only meal that they ate. And that's just how it worked. And it was you only like, eat from from what your woman cooks. You only eat from what she the family cooks. You only eat one time per day. That's all you need water? to eat to live. What about drink water? Yeah, all water. I said, drink water. Mm -hmm. Niggas, we can drink water now, nigga. That's it. That's I it. need to be I'm hydrated. Say, yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna do the other shit. That's it. That needs water, yeah, goddamn. Outside, <laughs> they was they was spreading the word. No goddamn jerk. You know what I mean? All day long outside, spreading the word, trying to get them that scene from Malcolm X. Them niggas standing on them ladders preaching. That's what they would do all day. And then they. Will come back at the end of the day, and all the women will have a meal prepared for everybody. Mm. So you know, man, as always, man, like you, you become the product of the environment. You know what I mean? And we we recorded Soul Food in Curtis Mayfield's home studio. Mm. We didn't mm. we didn't even know that he stayed in the neighborhood. You know what I mean? Right. So, um, but then, you know, close and immediate family was you know Sleepy Brown's father, Jimmy Brown from the group Brick. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You feel oh, me? Yeah, was, I ain't even know that. Brick yeah. was the niggas, goddamn it. You know what I mean? So that's him playing the the, uh, the flute. Do, 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 you know, on, on Daz. Boom, 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 boom. boom. There you go. That's crazy. Wow, wow. <laughs> this nigga's chicken little <laughs> cat. <laughs> cat about to put his gang bang shit on. Ain't nothing but a C.L.O. Junior right there. That's a West Coast <laughs> gang bang. Let's <laughs> go. C.L.O. Junior right there. <laughs> it's all right. You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> so listen, man, we, we, we literally had living legends. You know what I'm saying? Because Curtis Mayfield was still alive and we were yeah. there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we were around when he was doing his last album. You know, honorable mention of, of Cool Ace because he produced his last album, New World Order. You know, you see how you make the connection there? That la his last living album was entitled New World Order. Yeah. Curtis Mayfield. And we did yeah, our gone. album, That's our debut right. album in his home. Mm. Well, you know what I'm saying? And he gave us some good game. He say, and what he was telling Kool Ace, he was like, um, hey, you know, you got to learn the other tricks of the trade of the industry, man. Like, I know you want to be an artist, and I'm not saying that you're not a good artist. I'm saying, like, but everybody can't be an artist. And I mean, like, so, you know, in this industry, you know, you have more, you know, more tries and attempts than successes. Uh -huh. He said, so. You know, and every try and attempt needs an engineer. So learn the equipment, learn the logistics. You know what I'm saying? Like, you feel me? Run that back one more time. I he like said, that. Run every, that back. Every try and attempt needs an engineer. Mm -hmm. He said, so learn the equipment. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Learn the, 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 the tech. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The tech aspect of it. You know what I mean? Like, now you could do art, art as recreation. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You feel me? Because, you know, I don't know if y'all familiar with Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol has a great quote that says, art is what you can get away with. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that, that, I mean, that's awesome. You know what I mean? Like, that gives us license to do just about anything we could imagine. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you don't always have to be a product of your environment, but you being a product of your imagination. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, right. I think you embody that, man. You no, know, like, I try. I try not to see that, it, man, quite that often. that you make, like, that, that, you know, that I fell in love with was just, you know, you know, like, you're my kind of people is one of my favorite yeah. songs. We're going to drink good, we're going to smoke good. The interior is all oak wood. Good, you yeah. know what I mean? It's like the freedom that you chose to jump because nobody I don't really remember I mean Dre did it a, a little bit with the outfits and stuff but yeah. just the whole jumping out there saying I'm gonna do what I want to do like did where did that come from well you know there's a saying that says well I said it. it's my saying then go ahead <laughs> if you get somebody else to say it then <laughs> people <laughs> say it. It, goes. it goes well you know <laughs> You know, niggas not scared of fucking death. Niggas ain't scared of AIDS. They ain't scared of jail. They ain't scared of COVID-19. But one thing other niggas is, is terrified about is other niggas' opinion. Ooh. Nigga won't get out of bed if a nigga say getting out of bed ain't cool, right? Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but if you can defy that for a moment, God's promise is on the other side of that decision. Oh, like let me let me ask you about this since you brought it up. Brought like niggas be scared of other you niggas' know, black opinion. Feel like their opinion is the law. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you about the nigga experience. Come on. One of my favorite tracks. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, it talk. It like it like it's like on some other shit where it's like, what a nigga do, what, what a nigga, nigga does, does, what a nigga is, is what a nigga, nigga was, was, and a nigga done read history. history. Yeah, this eyes on, didn't man. see. Mm -hmm. The only reason you a nigga because somebody, somebody else wants you to be. be. What a nigga uneducated, integrated, singing. singing. We, we shall overcome. Mm -hmm. A nigga trying, trying to be white, white is what it seemed like a nigga had become. Call me a nigga to my face, can't do nothing but walk away. But here it is, others call other niggas nigga every day, dividing and conquering when they say the lighter shades of black okay, but after the middle. Class, they they pass by the project like that where we stay. Uh huh. <laughs> Since then, niggas that got grown have had a little bit nigga on my own. own. Should've known that could show no better than I was shown. Shit, I still want to hit the clubs as fresh as I can be. But really, 
It's, it's all for another nigga to see. see. And you know how a nigga get when, when you see, see another nigga outfit, outfit, don't want nobody to have what he, he ain't got. Somebody get, get drunk, get mad, get shot. That's why the property value ain't no good. In a nigga neighborhood. And a nigga could understand if they own it. Understood. I'm sick of lying. I'm sick of glorifying that. Mm-hmm. I'm sick of not trying. I'm sick of... It's a nigga, it's a nigga at home, nigga. like, why they only talking to each other? Just listen <laughs> to this dream that she said <laughs> she felt led. <laughs> Offer me this wisdom from this little book she read. Christ. And a but great look, deal of the black man's downfall. It's not knowing that we were never niggas at all. Woo! That shit but beautiful. you don't want to hear the truth. Oh, she looked deep into my eyes and said, brother, don't you know, you, you complain, complain about, about being, being black nigga. when niggas don't want, when they don't want to be black, when they mad because they can't be black no more. That's it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You complain about being black, they, but they mad because they can't be black no more. Yeah. No, man, we got away. We got away with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I got to acknowledge each and every equal in this room. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? There's something, uh, there's a synergy. There's a solidarity. You know what I mean? Like, there's something very unique and special about what we were able to acquire. You know, as a collective effort, it wasn't intentional. It wasn't deliberate. We were comfortable enough to be ourselves because we knew each other from other places. Mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You feel me? That's what it was. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And organized noise. You know, they're. Their governing was liberal. You know what I'm saying? You know, they didn't stop us. And plus, we came in with stripes. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Our stripes endorsed, you know what I mean, like it empowered that whole situation. We came in with street stripes. So, like, they weren't in a position of where, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, their, their, their attitude wasn't that they needed to correct us on anything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um, let's say, for, like, for example, me, Big, and Dre are, little, are, are the little brothers. We are the same age. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? So, but I've been running with the OGs uh, you yeah. know, my, my whole life. You know what I mean? So, you know, with that, you know what I'm saying? They was kind of being, you know, uh, curated, shaped, and molded. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? But we was, we were way up. We've been off the porch. Yeah. We're good at my, You know what I'm saying? You feel me? And it was right. dangerous what we were doing. Right. We didn't realize it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you feel me? Like, we were too young to realize that we would be forefathers. You know what I'm saying? You know, at some point later, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, um, our persistence and insistence, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, um, and our patience and trust with the process is just like Planned Parenthood. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Like, we wanted to do music that we grow old gracefully and still perform to this day. You know, with dignified. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? It's one Goody Mob song that will never get brought up. Which one? Me and I watch all the interviews y'all do. Beautiful Skin. Mm. And it's it's like it's one of those it's it, you know it's one of those paying tribute to the black women, but nobody ever brings us up. And I think it's one of the hardest good in mob songs. Like, give me the vibe, give me the room. Like, how did that come about? We was early on that. I know. We was so early on that. Craig Love did that track. Right? Yeah, he did. Craig Love is a homie out, out of the neighborhood, man. Talented individual. Um, Mays High School. With the Mays mm-hmm. High School. Mm-hmm. Them say you feel me? Yep, um, you already know. Yes, sir. But shit, that was the time when um, shit, Tupac was doing the song. Um, Dear Mom. Yeah, Dear Mom. Yeah. So I think, man, we was just shit being from the South. You know what I'm saying? You you love your father, you know what I'm saying, to death, and you love your mother, you know what I'm saying? So we was just paying homage, man, because wasn't nobody doing that, man. So many niggas was disrespecting women at the time, you know what I'm saying? And, at the time, man, we just wanted to give black women, man, they flowers, you know what I'm saying? Especially from us. And like you said, man, that shit lasted, man, 25 years. Yeah. So niggas can't say that that we were disrespecting um, black women back at that time, man. We was definitely, man, up, up, uplifting them. We were early on it, yeah. yeah. A lot of love, respect. But we was on the face records, man. They went for let us come out with no bullshit, really. Yeah, Yeah, you made that point the other day you know in, in the interview. You you, you made me, re- it dawned on me that we, yeah, man, we, we was on, we was signed R&B to an R&B, R&B, R&B label. Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. 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 So coming man. around record label like Death Row. Them yeah, niggas, yeah. Right. them niggas records. was coming through there, man. Them niggas S curls was on fleek. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nigga coming in, nigga was never keeping secrets. You, you niggas in that bitch rapping about the streets. This nigga in the crazy. next studio yeah. never keeping secrets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So how would that? How would that keep your <laughs> shit? That's joke. You know, just it looked serious. I mean, it, it was dope because you got to see another side of entertainment mm-hmm. up close. Now you got to see L.A. and Babyface up close. You yeah. got to see the difference between rap and R&B yeah. and the money difference. Mm. You got to see the way Usher got treated, TLC got treated, Tony Braxton got treated. Like, you know, to go on them family trips with them and, and, and be around those type groups at that time, it was just like, it gave us a lot to look at that other groups couldn't see. Mm-hmm. So that's why we, we had to make sure that 
the songs that we talked about was at a certain level, the music was at a certain level. Because I, the label we was on, we couldn't bring hoes ain't shit in there. Yeah, nah, not when a nigga don't want to keep no secrets in the next studio. Exactly. No. Like, Never like, meant to lie to you. You can't call her a bitch. No. <laughs> <laughs> She's not a bitch today. It's not today, my mm -hmm. nigga. No way. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. But you yeah. know what? I think, I think that, that, that y'all so mogul because once again, you know, they always talk about us being country. Yeah. I always think we're slow. I always, I, they think we're just the slowest of the slowest. You hear me? But y'all brought a, a whole intellect side. Yes. You feel what I'm saying? Even though the book was the book. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Because you got niggas who didn't even know nothing about the book. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? It's the way y'all was coming and y'all delivering and what y'all was yeah. saying. It was like, oh, these niggas ain't just no country rap. Right? Cause like Gib came in on Dirty Self, like he was reporting live from the news. Now them boys on the low got them boys on their back. Like, oh shit, Gib, what else happened? <laughs> what happened? Right, right, right. right. Nah, for real. They didn't get trapped. <laughs> Gib, man, tell me about that mutant mind frame. That was uh, that was, we we were one foot in, one foot out during them time, man. Yeah. We was uh. Gil was moving in the low. Gil was Gil was doing in high school. Gil was trying to follow Cujo over there in Dizzy Hill. <laughs> <laughs> I was working uh I was working Cameron Road car wash. You know what I mean? Shoot, man, we was shit. 160 out, man. Some of that meat. We got you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of that 160 out. <laughs> shit right there. Some of that meat. 160 out. <laughs> you know what I mean? You at school, you still in your daddy's car, man. Man, I'm trying to travel in daddy's car, man. You remember I, them days? I took the truck, man, and he came back. You don't know what, busting up in the driveway, and he's standing there with his hands on the hip like this. <laughs> Give me my like, car. You know you fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was, it was just them times. We was all still in. Everybody was still working, and, and we were still... We were still we were still doing a lot of shit that we weren't supposed to be doing. Like me, but me, I, I, I had, to, I had, I was working in a warehouse. I was going to house school in MLK behind the goddamn the church in the plow. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? In the corner, and, and it was just like shit. We go, we still got to goddamn get to the money though. Yeah, right? yeah. Cause goddamn Dixie Hill down there and Joe them getting it. Right. So it was like, I'm look going. Look at but you know, but look, all that, sh all that shit was going on, man. Joe the Guinness. All that I shit. I gotta go with Joe the yeah. I hear y'all creeping through the window, but I'm going to the block. <laughs> now, everybody we got yeah, them I'm double good. dribbling, man. You right. know? Um, so, like, Rico opened up his door. Excuse me. Like, Rico Wade, man, one third of the almighty OMP organized North production troop, man. Shout out to Sleepy Brown and Ray Murray, aka Yoda. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But anyway, he opened up his doors, his home, man. You know what I mean? Like to, you know, to a wretch like me. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? So, you know, shout shouts out to, to to the big bro, man. He just had a, a birthday recently too, man. So shout much love, Rico. Love Rico. 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 Yo. They don't make him like him no more, man. You know what I mean, like, you know, open up his doors, open up his home. You know what I mean, like, you know, uh, everything that's sacred and pure and private, man. He gave it to us. He shared it with us, man. You know, when it, niggas was coming over there broke. And like I said, man, we was living over there two weeks at a time, not showering, shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Like, he might go get one big box of Miss Winter's chicken with a big gallon of sweet tea, man, and, and, and feed everybody, man. Or like a hundred piece of Mojo's, you know, chicken wings. You know what I'm saying? Mojo. You know, you know what I'm talking about? That's it. Nah, shit, ain't hell no, nah, but I want some. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, know, you, know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it, it's a love thing, man. It's a devotion thing. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Like uh, we really got down for each other. You know what I mean? We really got down. So when did y'all realize, nigga, we are there. This is it. What you say, T? Hmm. Coming from the hood, being nigga from the hood, like no, we did it. I probably say, man, that um. When we presented at the Soul Train Awards uh, for the first time. When we seen oh, yeah. uh, we Pac. seen Tupac and Suge and all them, man. That that that, that felt like, man. Y'all know that scene yeah. when on the movie where Pac and Big run up on each other, they jump out the Hummer, right. Pac got on yeah. the fatigues, we were standing right there. there. Standing right there. Right yeah. there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. Right there. I really wanted to be in Goody Mob like that, for real. Damn. Yes. Man, I'll tell you the story on that. When we were at, um, 
We used to perform a lot at the spot called the Warehouse, man. Right. That's kind of where hip hop really kind of originated in Atlanta, the city of Atlanta. That was really the only outlet where people would go and they would kind of have like an open mic type of thing going on on Friday night. Right. Every Friday night, past the mic contest. So me and Joe used to go down there and then, you know, we we kind of made our way through there, made our name through there. We actually had one one um, one event where we battled against Gip and his group on mm. uh, the East Point Chain Gang. You know, we, <laughs> it, we, it, we didn't even know it was going to be like that. We just went, we signed up, and yeah. then we got there, we were like, hold on. Right. And they go get up there. They go, oh shit, what's up? Oh, y'all performing too? Now we went up like there. Beat Street, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to rock that thing. They rocked that thing. We, and it came down, and it's funny, it came down to us two groups. You know, and anyway, you know, we won that one, give it. We won that one, give it. We got that one, give it. But it was all good, man. That, that's where the family came together. But anyway, man. And right after that, Good and Mark came together, and we performed in there together as a group with all four of us. And his publicist, Tupac publicist, came up to me after the show, and she was like, "Yo, Tupac's trying to get with y'all." Mm. Mm. And, I, and I didn't believe her. You know, I'm like, "Man, who is this? Like, who are you? I don't know you. You know, yeah. I ain't never seen you with Pop before." Like, I didn't say that, but that was kind of the energy I was giving her. Right. And uh, she came at me. And she she was like, "No, no, no. Um, I got real information on him." You know, he's at Clinton, such and such facility. So then I was like, okay, you know what you're talking about. Right. So I said, well, what are you trying to do? She's like, you know, he just want to get with y'all and just kind of talk to y'all. He's just trying to figure out how to get up out of jail right now. So I was like, you know, God damn. I ain't got no money to get him out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, damn, man, darling, you, you know. trying to get put on. We <laughs> ain't got no money to come. Me, meanwhile, Gip over there like, shit, we get all some of that mid. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm talking junk about that. One sister, I was a million dollars to get him out. Uh, yeah. 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 Straight cash. Yeah. Then get the good ball first. Okay. And and fucked up. Shook. I love that though. I love that though, man. We we our, our, our legacy is you know attached to his, man. You know what I mean? Like we was in the company of that greatness, man. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah, like, yeah. Speaking of Atlanta, like you said, that like Fly said, Atlanta wasn't known for being the type of guys that y'all displayed. Like, what was it like when y'all start hitting the road and going to these different cities? as a goody mob, you know what I mean? It's what Gil said the other day, man. He was just saying how, you know, that was a, the era before internet, you know what I'm saying, IG, all this shit, you know what I'm saying, right. you feel me? Cell phones with cameras, any of this shit, you know what I mean? So we weren't seeing niggas until we saw them, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we was the first to go, That's uh, hard. That's go to crazy. New York, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas and, we saw. Yeah, and re represent, you know what I mean? Like, so like, I think the first time, like, the whole hip hop community came together was that one of those, one of those first, maybe that second or that third Source Awards, well, uh, well, sure, you know, uh, you stage, know the famous yeah. quote. Yeah, but we was, we was out there. We was right there, as you know. Is you that know, the but, same one with Dre said? Yeah, that's the same yes. one. Same one. Was about to that shit was lit. Yeah. That shit was lit. Yeah. It was lit. That shit was lit. Was lit. Like, the energy was thick. And I'm going to tell you, like, I don't know if y'all remember the, the, the clip when uh, Snoop was like, y'all don't love, y'all ain't got no love for Dr. Dre and Snoop right. Dogg. You seen that, that police baton they had? Yeah. All the niggas had them batons. This, they whole crew, they, they was 50 deep. Everybody, I don't say well, I said, who licensed these things? <laughs> <laughs> they were all, they were like, <laughs> it's like, what they you were all at least CeeLo size, but they were all about six five. Yeah. CeeLo size. He, and he it was, did, was just yeah, us. Football line, man. Oh, him, dang, man. Dang, but you know, dang, one thing that was good about us, like, <laughs> yeah, what yeah, you bro. say, man? Like, <laughs> we 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 intellects, yeah. we eccentrics, <laughs> we gypsies, all that kind of shit. Yeah. All the other, all the other extra shit. Right. But. That real nigga shit is stink off us. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? So like, yeah, we was in the dog pound, man. They ain't smell no puss on her. Hell yeah, right. nigga. You said y'all. I'm gonna say it like that because we on 85. So I don't want to keep it real, man. man I want to talk it how it really, really is. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I want a nigga to know. Yeah, yeah shit. Welcome back to the 85 South Show. We in here with the good yeah. boy. Yeah. Come on, man. Yeah. I mean, so. Yeah, no piss. It, it, it was with pride and with necessity, bro. We had to do it. We were the first. Right. right. We, we the couldn't first take no of guns with us, no leg cross lines. So it was just us. They, 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 they were, man. It was the lyrics, man. We wouldn't, 
we weren't talking no crazy shit. We were just talking some real Atlanta shit, man. Right, you know yeah. what I'm talking about? And they ain't, them, they ain't never been to Atlanta. You know what nah. I'm saying? They ain't never been on Cameron Road, right. been on Cascade. They ain't never been to Green Bride. They ain't never right. been down on the interstates, none of that stuff. So when they heard all that stuff in the music, right. they was just, they, they wanted to know what it they was all about. about. You know what I'm talking about? Just like when we hear some stuff from when NWA came out, I was like, man, I'm scared of them niggas, bro. <laughs> man, for real, like if you bro. listen, to, if you listen to how Timo come in mm. and you wasn't, like, say you ain't know him and you just heard the nigga come in and he say, you know they're making it hard on the yard. <laughs> fuck Chris Darden and fuck Marshall Clark. Like, hey, 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 I believe you, every bro. rap you ever rap, <laughs> Timo. Yeah, 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 brother. I don't give a fuck what you talking about. Because like, yeah, it's it like the way that your voice come across, it like, you ain't about to bullshit a nigga. <laughs> ain't nobody With got that time. much aggression, but he's like, I ain't going to get too mad because I need niggas to hear how mad I am. <laughs> we, we love it, though, man, because in, in the time that we come up, man, Atlanta was, Atlanta was like gladiator, <laughs> gladiator school. Right. What'd you say, OG? You know, Atlanta was like gladiator school around that time because this was the era before gunplay. Any of that even came into play. Right. Mm -hmm. It was two or three niggas in the neighborhood that had guns. Little girls jumping rope sound gangster. Yeah. Tamika and Chief outside tripping and skipping rope to the beats from my Jeep. I'm like, nigga, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 ain't, that ain't some gangster shit that sound gangster. Yeah. But that's some Make real. <laughs> see, that's some real shit. And. Niggas listening to it gotta respect it. Exactly. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Well, that right. like, well, now, why he ain't say he shot a nigga and then went to the crib and drunk a beer? No, nah, this nigga just kept it real. Yeah, right. Kept it, yeah. kept it all the way real, and you can't you can't do nothing about that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So when you see when they saw the mob when we was doing shows, man, they was just sitting looking, man, just listening, man, because right. they ain't never heard niggas four niggas from the south. You know what I'm saying? Spitting on some on some real live music from from organized. But then we were right. stepping up the stage, getting yeah, down into yeah. the audience and ciphering with niggas. We ciphered with boot camp click and you know duck down and all them. You all know, that. Making them yeah. niggas yeah. rap. Yeah. You can look down, down nigga rap. rap. Man, Those times are these gone, songs like. made it such a huge impression on my life. Like. Nigga come in on the song when the scene unfolds. unfolds. Young girl, thirteen years old, exposed themselves. Oh, come on, yeah. it's like how you gonna? Let me want to rap. You gotta shit. listen yeah. to all of that. You don't me listen to a part of that. Then you gotta hear that whole song. Okay. <laughs> By the end of that verse, everything in the room is moving, <laughs> just like in the video. Right. Yeah, it's just like uh, it's right. just like audio dope for real. And it made niggas something. who love the craziest hip hop stop and be like, hold on, nigga, they might just be listening enough. You know, some what niggas the fuck didn't is read. For, for some real? niggas weren't really read, man. They was really getting their knowledge from music. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, shit, let me let me hear what Goodem all got to say. Go look that up. All right, I, I can deal with that. So, I mean, really, that's I mean, that's what it is, man. You know what I'm saying? You want to put something real in your raps, man. Mm -hmm. And you want that shit. We ain't know it was gonna last this long, 25 years, man. We was just being hood reporters, man, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? But you know, you know you know how they identify with them C's though, like because we're like, it's like, it's like algorithm, you know what I'm saying, cadences, so mm -hmm. they looking at patterns and shit like that. One thing, we all was unique, everybody rhymed in different patterns, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's what New York, you know what I mean, like that's what raised their brow about us and they realized that it was dealing with a different kind of ambition, it was different, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, you know what I'm saying? They so, sound like nobody else. Because, and then, then you got to factor the tempo into it because like, you know, at one time, everything that came from Atlanta came was uh, was derivative of Florida. You know what I'm saying? So it was all skating rink and booty shake. So you going at 100 and got them 26 beats per minute. It ain't, I can say, been all over them Judge Buck J. Let's grab. Let's go and let's stop. Let's go. Yeah. Shut up, boy. You know what I mean? That nigga Philo just made his boy mad. But you see what I'm yeah. saying though? So when we turned it down, we then you go all the way down to boom dun 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 nigga got something to say. It ain't dead about no boot holes. See, that's what I'm saying. That's what I love about the music though. It always has 
Had that common you sense. You can talk and, about Buddha holding the whole right. <laughs> It's another Buddha holding the Hey, all and, y'all niggas just and, keep fucking with Buddha. If y'all ain't from the South, then you wouldn't even know who I was referencing, man. That's goddamn OG JT Money, man, from the Poison Clan. Representing JT my Money. Yes, sir. They're my niggas. They're my extended family, man. So no disrespect. Hey. Oh, love. JT, JT Money. JT Money got some yeah, yeah, pimp yeah. shit, too, now. Like, yeah, yeah, but see, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, y'all in Florida. I would say that y'all in Florida, too. Because that nigga came when I first heard JT Money was there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, no, yeah, so yeah. you got to walk the way back to Pause, man. Them, them the first niggas I feel like could really, really rap. They are the ones that gave me inspiration about just lyricism. Right. Talk your shit, OG. Because, you know, you look at, uh, I mean, shout out to Debonair, the devil's dad. You know what I'm saying? Like his partner in Poison Clan. You know, they got, some, what you know about drugs? Well, okay. So, look, they, um, what was the song? Spoiled Rot. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, uh, my accounts accounts too much to sleep solo. I wear polo while I'm playing polo. polo. You know, yeah. you know they, they were spitting. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so it was them. Yeah. And then it was um, 8 Ball and MJG to let me know, okay, like, this motherfucker who can really, really rap. Oh, and of course, Scarface. Shouts out to the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. legendary. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Hey, I'm Carlos Miller. Blue Chew is making waves and bringing more confidence to the bedroom by offering chewable tablets that can help men get stronger, longer lasting erections. The process is simple. Sign up at bluechew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And, it ships right to your door in a discreet package. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free. When you use the promo code 85 South at checkout, just pay $5 in shipping. So if you can benefit from extra confidence when it's time to perform, visit BlueChew.com for more details and important safety information. That's BlueChew.com. Promo code 85 South to receive your first month free. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast. Hey, man, it's your boy, DC Young Fly, man. You know what? You know what's going crazy? I just keep kind of, you know, them. You still have cheats from college? Huh? Or from last night relationship? Do yourself a favor and let them go. Trust me. Go check out Brooklinen right now. Brooklinen has a variety of sheets, colors, patterns, and materials to fit your needs and tastes. They work directly with manufacturers to make luxury available directly to you without the luxury level markups. Brooklinen has over 50,000 five-star reviews and counting. 50,000 five-star reviews. Yes, they are so confident that you will love their product. They even offer a 365-day money-back guarantee. One-year guarantee, y'all. And Brooklinen is so much more than sheets. They've got comforters, pillows, towels, even loungewear, and more. So use the promo code 85 South to get $25 off when you spend $100 or more, plus free shipping. You know how we love free shipping. Brooklinen.com, y'all, and use promo code 85 South at checkout. That's Brooklinen.com and enter promo code 85 South to get $25 off when you spend $100 more. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Don't forget, free shipping. <laughs> I mean, Monday. so there was a variety. That's it. I mean, just those couple of references right there that you know what we was capable of, like, mm -hmm. you know. But what I can say, man, like this generation of, of now, you know what I mean? Like, I see remnants. I see the my reflection in everything everybody's doing. And, you know, one thing about what you speak, you say it often enough, it casts a spell. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Like, it's magic. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's black magic when we do it. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on the on the West Coast, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know what I mean? Their, the spell, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, was, um, you know, they spoke death. You know what I'm saying? Like, and, and death dies. Life lives on. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? We spoke life. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Like, and we breathe life into, you know, now a decade and a half of, of, of offspring, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, keeping the, the, the torch burning for the South, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, like, so all the different little bad, that ain't no disrespect, am I saying that right? No, you, yeah, know, you right. on some I'm shit. I'm just saying, all our children rich. Mm -hmm. Shit. That's all you saying? You know what I'm saying? That, okay, shit. That, that's what you saying? That's what I'm trying to say. Pop that booty hole in the pot. 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 Pop that
<laughs> no, nah, man, I've been, I've been a fan of everything. Songs, Yo, I can start naming random shit. I'm talking Basically. about our artistic children. Uh, everybody who's, de- uh, everybody who's inspired by Dungeon Family, all Mo of de- the styles. Like, we became the grill for the South, man. All of the many different things that you could do. And now like Atlanta is now like the, the, the where you have to come to even try to branch off or do any music. Like, niggas are coming here. Right. You feel what I'm saying? And it was like, like, even now you here, do you even know who started here? Yeah. You got to go test the pot. Ain't no around here. Yeah, did. Like, Let you know, me ask you this one, CeeLo. Man, that fuse, that's ours. He yeah, that's what I'm saying. How that make y'all feel? Let me ask you this. You know, you this. Influence so many uh, people, man. This but, one of the ones I feel like it slept on, too. That bass head jazz. I get a lot. People mention that a lot to me, man. I, I, I tell you about that shit. That shit was like a mistake. Come on, man. That motherfucker's so smooth, man. The beat man. keep cutting off because some of it got erased when we was doing that beat. So it keeps stopping because a part of it got erased. And they was like, man, just fuck with it. Just leave it like that. I ain't know no better. That's called artistic <laughs> flair. Yeah, straight to the point. Hey, man, what I said earlier, man, art is what you can get away with. It. You feel me? Man, we're going to sit up here and try to speak as colorfully, you know what I'm saying, you know, <laughs> as, <laughs> as effectively as we can, man, right. to make you feel like we know a little bit about what the fuck we was doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, you feel me? I, but I, it's I, all been a blessing, man. Like, you know, you can't really, I can't even articulate it. Now, and I, I can talk like a motherfucker, but like, it's still, it's, it's beyond, it's, it's bigger than words, man. I mean, like what we was able to do, man, it's a blessing, man. Well, yeah. a, we humble, my nigga. Well, that's well, stepping out. That's one of my favorites, bang, too. Bang, bang, right. bang, 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 bang. That was the time of Atlanta in the karma time. That was karma. Y'all remember that club? Oh, yeah. That, that yeah, was, no, 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 no. You know, everybody ain't from around here like this. Oh, club, club. Yeah, you, got, you got to get me up on club. Yeah, man. That's that, some Stan Rose shit. That was like, no, that was some downtown shit. Yeah, yeah, ain't no downtown, nigga. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stay away from downtown. Yeah, it was, it was, nah. it was just, that was you know, karma. Pimp, stay that away. was when Atlanta was, was, that's when Madonna was hanging out in Atlanta. Yeah, that's, that's when the other level of Atlanta started. That's when people Big started money. seeing Dallas come out more. Big that's money. when Dallas started coming out more. Dallas Austin. Okay. Mm. You know what I mean? He, he, you know he, he stopped he, through the he, trap. That's, yeah, he stopped through. Yeah, that's, that's mm-hmm. when more of us started seeing Dallas. what that lifestyle was. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? like, that was another life. That was another life. That, that was another life. Money. Mm-hmm. That was that was that was big record. That was a long way from 160 again. Yeah, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all feel like y'all get the recognition? You know, Ben is though, like you said, y'all touch so many artists and y'all can see y'all influencing all these artists. Do you feel like the when people run into y'all, do they say, "Oh man, thank you," and give y'all y'all prop, y'all flowers? Oh, man, that shit awesome, man. I mean, the same shit that I used to do when I used to see people that I looked up to. You know what I'm saying? Now, it, you know what I'm saying? It's having an effect now. You know what I'm talking about? So I can run up to people, man. They say, man, you know what I'm saying? I was 13 years old. Y'all yeah, came out of uh, shit. My dad and my mama put me on the Goody Mob or whatever. Man, we still listen to Goody Mob. So, man, it's it's great, man. But that's how it is, man, when you um when you when you raising a flag, man, for your own shit, man. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then, man, you, you, you some faux hungry young men, man, just just ripping through adversely, man, like it ain't shit, man. Cause like you said, man, they country. Nigga don't know nothing about nothing, man. I mean, what the hell kind of song is cell therapy? And, I mean, what is this? But man, we kept pushing, man. I mean, we was on the road by ourselves. We right. fought, You know what I'm right. saying? All four of us. I'm talking about going into a big ass crowd with white boys shooting birds at you. You know what I'm saying? We like, man, what the hell is that? I mean, y'all don't, y'all don't fuck with us, man. We got our state like, that mean we love y'all. I'm like, for real? Like, bro, where we come from, man, that don't mean what that mean, you know right, what I mean? Right. So, man, we had to go through all that, man. I mean, shit, first time jumping on an airplane, leaving Georgia. Nigga, I wasn't finna go nowhere, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 I was finna stay right here, but... One of, one of the first shows we did, yeah. man, there was a stage built on top of them fucking big spools. Right. They got the... How you, you roll them out and put the wiring for the fucking uh, the, 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 the lines, the power lines, yeah. them big spools. Yeah. They put a fucking like a, a fucking coffee, not a coffee table, one of them folding tables. Am I right? You remember that shit? Mm-hmm. And we were got there sharing. And we had one motherfucking mic and one goddamn Bobby Brown mic. <laughs> 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 hey, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The whole thing, yeah, the thing, yeah. That's my prerogative, Mike. Right. Yeah. 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 Hey, you know uh, can I that take your order? Yeah. Uh, pull back around, hey, man. Pull back around. <laughs> that is that what it was, man. That was our Ooh, first tour. We got down. Goddamn- <laughs> Ja Rule, he was part of a group called the Cash Money Click, man. Yeah, nah. Herb Gotti was the DJ. It was Shaheem, the rugged child, who was with Wu-Tang. 
OC, Mike Geronimo, Royal Flush. Who else was out there? Hip hop, boy. That was the time to be alive back then. That's what I'm just saying. No time. Oh, Jamal. Jamal out there? Yes, sir. He said, yes, sir. Harry Pussy ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We need y'all to tell them. Hell yeah. Y'all was there. Right. I got one more. I got one more to ask about. What, what? People always bring up CeeLo's song Crazy, right? Yeah. That shit took over the world. Shit went crazy. But you know, my, my shit is Smiley Faces, though. That's a good one. That shit is crazy. It's, I, like, that's one of them for real happy type songs. Yeah. You get what I'm Mine saying? Fuck like, you. That's that one too. Man. I mean, not that, fuck you, but uh, fuck you. Yeah, that, 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 that. <laughs> and fuck her too. <laughs> but look, what I no always say, you know, any success we ever had, man, it all lends itself to, you know, what it extends from. You know what I mean, yeah. like, it extends from the Dungeon Family Tree. You know right. what I mean? Like, so, you know, a lot of those things, you know, um, were given give a license, you know what I'm saying, you know what I mean, like, because we, we had already accomplished prior, man, so, mm -hmm. you know, they extend that far into the world, man, like, you know, it's truly a testament to where it starts from, the strength of the roots, the roots of the situation, man, this mm -hmm. dungeon family, so, we always do it, like, you know, and say, hey, man, if outcasts win, we all win, you know what I'm saying, like, so, goddammit, B.O.B. or goddamn Miss Jackson, when that's a hit record, it's our hit record, it ain't just outcasts hit record, it's our, we, we get a piece of it, you mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and 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 vice versa. So, you know, basically, yeah, it was Gnarls Broccoli, but Crazy is a Dutch and Family record. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Dutch and Family is why motherfucker got in respect. Right. 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 Now, what adjustments did y'all have to make once y'all blew up? Like, when y'all coming from the streets of Atlanta and, and becoming superstars, like, what was the adjustments? Like, because everybody want to make it, but they don't know what it takes to get to, to, to get decide. there, to decide that you got to deal with all these different personalities and Come on, give me talk that, that shit. That give you me. know is bitch ass niggas, but you gotta deal with them because they signed the, the checks. Like this gift department. <laughs> <laughs> Let me drag your, your drag. Drag on. I think it like this. We we came in already knowing a lot, and, and more than the average artist knew. You know what I mean? So off top, we was already a problem to the record labels. We was already a problem to the establishment. The thing is that we came in talking about. We was already a problem to the establishment. So with us knowing that, we knew we had to work harder. That's why stage shows were always live with live bands. And that's why we did the things we did. And that's why I felt like CeeLo was the, the, the singing, breaking the, the shows down, doing the poetry, breaking it off, letting Lumberjacks do what they was doing. When they was, we was doing uh, Call of the Wild verses and doing Get Up, Get Out, we stayed on what Goody Mall was about. At the same time, we knew that us talking to people and being on BET, it made us a little bit more important than the average rapper at the time because everybody was just screwing one direction. And with that being said, it made us ask a lot of questions when we got to Chicago. Now we're not with the face people, we were asked the people. We started asking these people questions. Like when we got taken out and we had all of a sudden, we sitting at a restaurant, we taking 80 people out. Yeah. Instead of us sitting there and being like, it's cool, and we ordering, ordering, we'll be like, shit, how much this call? Right. Who paying for this shit? Hey, right. Gil. What the fuck going on? <laughs> and they be like, they problems. Even though they got hit records, I'm going to tell y'all about the incident. As soon as we went gold, we was in a room with L.A. And us just being so militant and so military-minded, it was almost like, we told, it was like, congratulations, y'all go. And it was like, yeah, that's cool. But we were organizing all, fuck you. And it, it, it came off like that to them. Because it was like, and, it, it, and, it, and to this day, I think about it, I'm like, damn, was that a mistake? But it was like, that's how we felt because that's how we came in the game. We were sitting in Curtis Mayfield house and he took me in his room and he showed me, he showed me the original shits from Superfly. And he said, yo, Gil, Never sell your publisher until you time until you ready to lead the game. And you gotta think, having these conversations with actual legends, 
it made us different. It made us difficult because even you yeah. know, we, 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 we got to the table with gold records and they'd be like, yo, we got that 250000 for y'all. And we'd be up in there like, shit, fuck that shit. Man. This ain't enough money. But right? you know what, give we them? always broke it down to it's four of us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So even right now, that saved us 25 years later. Right now, we sit here and we own everything we ever recorded. Can't even say that. Yeah. None of them niggas can't even say that. You know? It's and it's like we see everybody with the big house, the big we know. Y'all y'all sold, we know, y'all got the check. But they they can't offer us enough money to have this. See, as long as we still hold our balls and our drawers, <laughs> hey man, they got respect and love. Them. Right. Them boys did enough with them awards and all that. But I'm talking about as far as these streets, as far as the streets of the streets, cause we still, right. that, that the truth. So even not, you know not, I mean? not giving part of the ownership, you think they kind of scared the label? No, it's just that they know we, 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 we always been smarter than what we spoke, what but, we look like. But yeah. I was just gonna say, the answer, then the cap on what you said, it was a mistake because it was an assumption. It was a misunderstanding. We never sat down at the table and had the conversation. Our action was our opinion. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what we did, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, even in the art form or even in just the energy, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, was our our stance and opinion. Mm -hmm. So we they never they never even asked us. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So, they were like, after this, you like, nah, fuck you. Okay. <laughs> we had to say fuck you. Everything we doing in the in the art form is like fuck you. That's why, we doing because we That's why we ain't gonna never get no. They pay for Manchurian candidates. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Mm -hmm. They pay what? Manchurian candidate. They they pay for somebody that's fixed. You know what I mean? Like, you know, that's appointed, you know, to, to mule whatever agenda it mm -hmm, may be. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, they don't, they don't, they don't, they don't support independence. Right, <laughs> you know right, what I'm saying? right, right. Because y'all was going to end up, <laughs> y'all going to end up spreading it out to others. You got to goddamn get some, hey, will you help mm -hmm. me be independent? Mm -hmm, you can't, you mm -hmm. can't say that. That makes no sense. Right. You got to either be independent or not. Right. That's right. the deal. I didn't like to pee yeah. that boy. <laughs> but they ain't like that. They ain't like that. That 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 side of the game. Like, hmm, y'all can be a counselor to the well, to the lady. Well, independence is, is you know it equates to knowing your worth. Yourself. Right. You know what I mean? You feel me? And at the same time, think about it. We always on the same labels. We seeing what's going on with TLC. We seeing what's going on with Tony Breast. But think about that. That label was so cold. The face was so cold. Nobody, t even the artists, didn't talk to each other about that. Right. Cause the game was so good. Right. Shit, you got the money, you can make everybody act right. Right. For a little while. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's that last look, it's that last part. For a little while. Right. <laughs> so, cause it's like, that's like, that's like, they give you the upfront money, or they say you get a part of the sales, but niggas ain't even think about publishing or radio play. Hey man, no, none of that. let's let's not make it sound like it's something negative, man. We talk, y'all, we have we talking about business. Business, right? yeah, yeah, more definitely, like, more definitely. Yeah. Business is business, man. It's a church and state. You don't get what you deserve. You get what you negotiate. More definitely. That's a ball right there. No, for business is like church and state. You don't get what you love. You get what you negotiate. More definitely. Because business is definitely. I didn't mean for that to rhyme, <laughs> but it did. Business is business. Because if you don't know, you don't know. Yeah. Now, I hear a lot about, y'all yeah, was around during this era, I hear Suge got a lot of people paid, like, and went in and, and did that, like, the, the get, it went from, you know, a couple cents per record to you getting a, you know, a dollar or something per record. Did that shift all the way through the industry or just the people he affected personally? It kind of shifted all the way through. Mm -hmm. Come on, man. Yeah, Speak on it, Mo. Mo's a smart shifted, guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. It kind of shifted all the way around. It, that we, we actually began to make more off records then because when we first came in, the deal we did, I mean, it was so insane and so, I mean, so terrible of a deal. But like CeeLo said, that's what we negotiated. You know, he called some young black men that were excited about being with the face records, you know what I mean? Baby face, you know, L.A. Reid, nigga. Hey, Y'all wanna sign us? Let's go, they whatever, do. you know what I mean? Whatever. We, I mean, to be honest with you, we probably would've signed it without even letting the lawyer look at it. We were just so that crunk about getting down with them because we were artists, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And young kids. And that's why they get them young because they're young and dumb. You know, not mean dumb, but they don't, they're just stupid, uneducated. but just uneducated, mm -hmm. you know? Just mm -hmm. don't know what to do or how to do it. But, um, you know, 
it's a good way, it's a good thing that should did. I, I will give him credit for that, going in and getting the people their money. I mean, that's the type of stuff people want. You know, that's the type of person you want on your team. Somebody like that, you know, it's just, you know, he has some, some negative and some positive qualities <laughs> that were good for business, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Tactics. Let me ask y'all this, y'all were in the front of the pack when the South started the official run in hip hop. Did you ever think the run would last this long? For it Atlanta to be that place, still running. the musical yeah. hotbed that it is. From the time Bobby Brown got the town all the way up until now, or, or whenever that turning point in music was for Atlanta. Even he knew it was somebody at Atlanta. You he, get what I'm saying? He was early on it. That, that why he, he's such a That why he came on down. Yes, sir. Yeah. Come on. I mean, New York, not, New York had their chance, you know what I'm saying? Not that, like they don't have another chance, but it was like they started it first, you know what I'm saying? It was born up there, but it had to keep growing, you know what I'm saying? It had to keep growing and come down to the West Coast, then come down to the Southwest Coast, then it, and it ended up down here in the South. And we just embraced it so much because I guess we just been kicked out of kicked out of the conversation for so long. And then when you talk about us in the conversation, you know what I'm saying, it's on some goddamn whole shit. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I mean, just for just for young MCs right now that do their history and watch the videos and listen to the radio, man, and try to, you know what I'm saying, make their rhyme different from everybody else who's just trying to get some get some drip out here, man, just get lit or whatever, man, and try to just push that envelope, man, because this is our genre right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You gotta people you you want people to respect your genre just like people respect country. You know what I'm saying? They had big ass uh, um, awards for country people, you know what I'm saying? Jazz, I mean saying blues. So, you know what I'm saying, bring some to the to the to the coach, you know what I'm saying? So it's like you know, whatever these young brothers doing, it's all right to have fun, because that's what we was doing, you know what I'm saying? We was doing our thing. We didn't know that cell therapy was going to be as big as it was. Our whole album wasn't about cell therapy. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Our whole album was about shit, the dirty South, what was going on in the South, you know what I'm saying? This shit was born in the trap, you know what I'm saying? The name Goody Mug came up out the trap, you know what I'm saying? So, but it evolved into something else, you know what I'm saying? That people know a nigga for 25 years, so. I was, just about to, I was just about to speak on evolution, man. Yeah. Like shit, man. Yeah. Like it's never no disrespect to where it's birth. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Well, you know, we are the bottom man of the East Coast, man. We are relative. You know what I'm mm -hmm, saying? You feel mm -hmm. me? I feel immediately connected to where the East Coast initiated, man, up top as well, far as hip hop. I'm totally and completely inspired yeah. by East Coast hip hop. Love it. Mm -hmm, you know what I'm saying? Look at this shit. You hear me? That's facts. Okay. Right. Right. So, but what I'm saying, you don't go back to the womb, you go to the tomb. Hip hop ain't nothing but like 40 some years old. This is a, this a big baby. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Like, right. it's like we still growing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's going to grow on past us. You yeah. know what I mean? And the irony of it is, like, you know, the, this this generation is only more their country and, and, and making more money than any other prior generation off, off their content and culture. So you gotta salute that. Mm -hmm. You gotta salute that. But you know, at its most accessible and most influential, I feel like as a whole, you know, we're operating on our lowest frequency. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, that's all. That's a hell of a thought, right you there. You know, like the Earth is getting a large omission. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? A very destructive energy. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Right, right, right. In my opinion, right. When God, it comes, when it just comes to music. If God is but one thing, if God is but one thing, mm -hmm. is time. If God is but one other thing, is balance. That's all we got to have. That, that's all. Good enough, not here to judge. We love the youth. We love like we real niggas. We will kill you if you fuck with us out here. You uh -huh. see, just like the rest of me, like. <laughs> 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 PSA, <laughs> we understand. <laughs> Don't get it fucked up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, in the but we here to represent it. a balance. You know <laughs> like a coexistence, a cohabitance, a true community, right. a true mm -hmm. culture is balanced. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, that's all we here to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, and as long as that the balance can be supported, man, you know, it's just, it, you know, righteousness, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, that's it, man. We too heavy? No, uh -huh. hell no. I mean, you know, it's like I'm over here agreeing like I'm in that church. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, like, yeah. Go to the you know, because we 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 series, are all influenced by y'all heavily. Like, you know, 
even in, if, you know, I would say Losis, because Losis put me on to a lot of Goody Mob. I was familiar with the stuff that everybody knew, but he put me on to the stuff that, you know, let me know, like, whoa, these niggas was really, and once you get that information, you see how much game y'all laid down. So for us to be here and be able to just chop it up and talk to y'all, yeah. it's like, that's why we like, when these niggas is really right here. You know what I'm saying? Well, we crazy. came along, the internet wasn't really popping like that, so you wouldn't really, you wouldn't really know, but until now, until you just start searching out a T-Mo goodie or searching out a Gip or a CeeLo or a Cujo, mm -hmm. then you will, you will see it's new music out there, you know what I'm saying? But just like the radio station, they move on, like Cube said, they'll have a new nigga next year. You feel what I'm saying? So it's all about, it's all about what you do, like P said, it's all about what you do with your 24 hours. Mm -hmm. You got eight hours to sleep. Yeah. See what you do with the rest, the rest of them of is it. what you do with it, you know what I'm saying? So. Shit, it was just it was just a blessing that when we were young, we was able to just write all that shit down, man, and, and was able to just spit that shit on them live instruments and man make a name for ourselves, bro. You I like it saying? though, man. The internet is just it's just it's mass production, mass consumption. Mm -hmm. You just got to work at the rate. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? You know what I'm saying? Like, you just gotta do a lot of what you do. Right. You feel me? That's yeah. how you compete. Made a hell of and a that's point. working hard. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You feel me? Like that's right. grinding and fucking committing yourself. Like a motherfucker, man. It's oh, like you can't, cannot be that's no They've been telling it. us for five years to get y'all on here. Hell yeah. Every right. literally, week. like, call them. I'm like, nigga, yeah, I, I can't call <laughs> them. Right, and you just made a good point, Cujo. Like, if it's, if it's, if you ain't never heard of this new music, you know what I mean? So. Right. For everybody that might not know what, you know, the, these dudes catalog, go listen to it. It'll be new to you. That's high cunning, man. Y'all bullshitting. Talking about, every time he just speak a dungeon baby. family, I'm just like, nigga. Them niggas that was, there, bro. That's the, you got to understand the heart. You feel me? The heartbeat of, the, of Atlanta. The yeah. heartbeat. Niggas tripping. You got to understand the heartbeat of why this shit flowing and how even you said the future. Nigga, don't know future's in that dungeon family. You see what I'm saying? And Future done birthed a lot of other motherfuckers. So the heartbeat is still beating. But see, it's you like whatever me? point in your look, life you was listening to this shit. his land. Yeah. Yeah. You feel me? Look back at us through Future. It's like, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. We, we ain't that far away from you. We there. I damn near like, want to go at the house. I just need to <laughs> stop by. All right. What'd you say? But like? I was just saying, this. they made the kind of music, like Good and Mom, that you have to go back and listen to when you grown. Right. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you don't understand Kids can't listen real. to that because you're a child. It, that's oh, how deep it went because they said a lot without even directly saying this shit. Man, man, thank y'all. Y'all should let it find us by being here. You know what I mean? We learning a lot. and get, we, Me and you need to learn how to bake bean pies, man. It's bullshit. Get bean. Start right there. Don't the bean pies, yo. Don't make the right bean pies. Leave your Dixie here fucked up. <laughs> Y'all went crazy on the new album. Yes, yeah, sir. Survival Kid, bro. Yes, yeah, sir. Survival Kid. Everybody Why that name? Survival Kid. Everybody knew you want. Hey, man, Survival Kid. I don't know, man. It's like um, everybody got different stuff they can put in their Survival Kid. You know what I'm saying? Music. Is one thing you might want to get in your survival kit. You know what I mean? Yeah, I would need you know that. Go bag. Whatever, you know what I'm saying? Go bag. Mm -hmm. Hey, bro, you got to have that music. So, like I said, it was our 25th year anniversary, and um, it was on the right, man, and we did a new album for our, um, our fans and had that survival kit come up, man, just because of what we were going through with the, uh, with the pandemic. You know what I'm saying? People were just getting prepared. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. all we was doing, man, was just. Um, we're just speaking on a lot of stuff, man, that was going on at the time. You know what I mean? And um, and putting it out there, bro. So, I mean, we from the 90s, man. It's 2020, 2021. Yeah. Hey, bro. And y'all still, still here. here. Still moving. Still standing. Still traveling. Still standing. Still self Man, for real. What y'all call this shit already? You just made me think, what songs would I have what in my mean? survival kit, nigga? If you get five songs, you, mm. this you your survival five. kit song. You five get five. Songs. Everybody got to get five. Everybody, Everybody got to get five. Five songs How in you your survival first? kit. Uh, shit. Let me see you go first. Woo, that's a tough one. That's yeah. a tough one. That's hard. Get what he do. Yeah, that's a hard one. Um, uh, Damn, Willie Hutch, The Glow. Okay. Hey, from the last Dragon yes, soundtrack. Yes, sir. Okay. Willie Hutch the Glow. Oh my God. Um, 
Okay. Damn, I gotta go regroup. I gotta throw that one away. Uh, <laughs> that's heavy. <laughs> well, he has to glow. Shadow. Yes, sir. Uh, Michael Jackson, Dirty Diana. That was nice. Hmm, I got a Michael too, though. Um, Michael Jackson in your shit. I got Switch, a, I Call Your Name. Mm. Uh, then I got uh, Masterpiece Swamp Niggas. Swamp mm. Niggas? Mm. Yeah. yeah, come on. Yes. Mm. Yeah, and then um, I'm from DC, so Backyard Bang, Keep It Gangster. That's my yeah. five. Shit. That's my five. I was just you gotta go. Recently. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. It's, it's, you gotta go. Who, who you got? I ain't ready. Come on. <laughs> he, like, he like he can't do it. Y'all go on the game. This is a good ass question, man. The guy that you survived on the game. I got, I got, I got, I got. So fresh and so clean. Ooh. Okay. Are you got, serious? I got to go with so fresh. I got to go with so fresh. Right. Uh, 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 Tyree, sweet lady. Okay. Uh, shit. I gotta go back. I gotta go back. I had another one. Uh, <laughs> uh, Teddy, TKO. I can listen to that shit Woo! all day. Blim, 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 blim. Finna go home. Wagwan. Uh, not not Bob Marley, but his son Skip Marley. Yeah. He got he got a good one. Um, they call uh uh uh. uh, 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 uh <laughs> It, it called what it's called, God damn it. Uh, it I think it's a wall, uh, slow down. I okay. fuck with slow down because I can't get the other one. What am I on? Four? That oh. four? Uh, whoo. And my last one, y'all, real talk. I'm going I'm going now, nigga. And I wish a nigga would say something. <laughs> Beyonce, Dream Girls. <laughs> 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 Oh shit. She what you got, man? You going? Uh, you going? That's a good no. song. <laughs> Alright, you had the old school first. Let me see. I throw that Boosie Collins, what's the telephone bill in there? Mm. That motherfucker too hard, right? Yeah. That's hard. Alright, um. Uh, let me see. I put that Herbie Hancock. Oh man. That watermelon, man. Hell oh, no. Nah. Yeah. She sound heavy. <laughs> that was my shit. I need that. Uh, wow. All right. Wow. This uh, this gonna sound random as hell. I wanna throw um, um, flex the, the um, by Mad Cobra. Flex, time to have sex? Yeah. Okay. I'll throw that in there. Time to have sex. Yeah, that's oh, the shit. Man, that's my, that's, that's all that back. That's my shit. Yeah, yeah. I don't give a fuck what nobody said. Let me find out that one Carlo got a slow grind. All right. I'm at mean, number four. Right. Right. I love the way that bitch come on. Morning. Morning. Just can't wait till. Nigga come out of nowhere. Been too long. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to talking shit. Man, man, okay, man. all right. Not just because y'all here. Right. Not, cause, not just because y'all here. I'm putting lion straws, mirrors, and plates on that mouth. That's that's number four. Color okay. bottom. Oh, okay. That's it. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm telling you, because I was at, I was about to get out of high school when the album came. So that was my whole soundtrack all the way back from the football game. Um, Last one. So got a butter. Last one. Shit. What's the thing again? Five songs to do what? In the survival kit. Oh, okay. In the survival kit. You got to listen to the bitches every day now. I know. <laughs> Just to that. Okay. <laughs> All right. I got to throw one in here for my spirit. What's that? Which one? That Al Green. Damn. Which one? How can you mend a broken heart? Because you, you got to keep in mind, this is the all I got. Heart. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That you nigga, broken, that man. nigga said, with you, "How man? can I lose up? Am I win?" <laughs> <laughs> and then my favorite shit is at the end when the nigga just the song about to go off. The nigga like, "And my clothes is all wet." <laughs> that ain't had shit to do with the song. He <laughs> <laughs> uh, was in the rain. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, yeah. Let me see. Shit. I gotta have that goddamn uh, that James Brown. This is a man's world. Come on. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. He let him know. Let me play this for you. See, goddamn, I gotta have that sitting at the dock of the bay. Come on. Oh, this red. Yeah, I gotta have that old. Oh, this red. So okay. come on. I gotta have that goddamn um, midnight train to Georgia. Oh, oh midnight train to Georgia. <laughs> gotta have that midnight train to Georgia. Oh, that was good. Let me see, I got two more, right? Yes, sir. Let me see. Hmm. 
I gotta have that still standing though. That song still standing. Okay. You love that? I love that one. Fuck, gotta have that one. Gotta have that one. You, you like that one? Jimmy one got more it. Goddamn. I got it. One you more. got yours? Yeah. You had to go look one here. He got one more. He got one more. One, one more, more goddamn. Bro. I gotta have that goddamn. Like that, that deep by uh by uh Outcast. Deep, deep. Oh, you wanna go deep, I take it deep. Yeah. You know you can't fuck with me, let my mind creep. Uh -huh. They let me hit the stage, now I want to my mind creep. Uh -huh. That's that shit now, yeah, boy. Exactly. You wanna go oh. deeper than the page in the book. Let, let me look. look. Come you on. let me hit the stage, now gift. I got, got that gift. ass. Well, he had it right here, down. All right, I got goddamn <laughs> Ram Careless Whisper. <laughs> hey! Yeah. That's a good one, my nigga. Boy, they took that boy, that George Michael, nigga. Hold on. <laughs> All right, I got Bob Marley Redemption. Yeah, okay. Okay. Ready to go. Okay. Why All right, we're going to take it on to the beach. We're going to color me bad, sex you up. Oh! <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. Then we're going to get down hit. We're going to 5 o'clock okay. drop. Okay. That's that 8 ball MJG, Mr. Okay. B. Okay. Okay. Mr. Okay. B. Okay. Yes, okay. So, so. And then that last one, man. I'm good. Don't leave me alone. Shit, swing it thing, man. Big, Big Mike. Oh, yeah. yeah. have a swing and sing. Don't do the fact that y'all nigga have been fine, Mike. That was a good one. All right. I gotta say, start out with uh, Michael Jackson, Human Nature. Okay, okay, okay. 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 That shit hard. Uh, I definitely gotta swing over to uh, just keep your faith in me. Oh, yeah. Don't act impatiently. You get where you need to be in due time. Yeah. Gotta have that Ooh, every it. morning. Let's see the okay. ring. Okay. Okay. Yeah, all right. In due time. Yeah, gotta have that. I gotta have um. Ribbon in the Sky. Ooh, Ribbon in the Sky. Steve, Steve, Steve got to have some Stevie Wonder. I fold, yeah, that was my favorite uh, one. I got to have that, um, that George on my mind, Ray Charles. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, I was thinking Phil, man. Last one. That's one more. Yeah, one more. Got one more. I got one more. He ain't said so he didn't get that far. Yeah. Cherish the day. You a good one. Yeah. 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 I'm thinking of Chate Chow. Great selections, man. Oh. Mm -hmm. right, bye, 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 Mr. Green. <laughs> we want to see. It is your chance to shine, Mr. Green. Liberation, outcast. Okay. 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 There's a, there's a. <laughs> that shit crazy. I love it. Fantasy, Earth, Wind, and Fire. Okay. okay. That's the most Man, it's so fucking many, bro. Mm -hmm. True Spandau Ballet. Okay. Mm -hmm. I had two Earth Wind Fire too. I won't say that down. Y'all know this song, uh, I Write a Song for You by Earth Wind Fire? Mm -hmm. I love that song. I'm just throwing that out the blank count. That was it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I got love. Yeah, no, he didn't count that one, so he got two more. Okay. Shit, man. I was trying to be, you know what I'm saying, OG with it, but I really got some young nigga shit. Come back. Throw me some yin yang to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, good, but yeah. you gonna listen yeah. to that every day. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to the window. <laughs> to the wall. What'd you say? I think Jeez. I could do that goddamn. That jealousy, whatever you want. Oh, oh I forgot beauty! <laughs> <laughs> that drew him. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Get beauty by Damn. Uh, what else? One more. Damn. Yeah, one more. A big one. Shit. I can't believe I got a beauty. Yeah, Earth song, Michael Jackson. Oh, man. Man. Dang, so, hey, man, if you watch this, go there. Go there. Right. Go that that Earth song video. Oh, nigga, 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 nigga don't roll out of them bitches down. Yeah, you got to. Go listen. If you ain't heard yeah, these, go listen. Yeah, these on the video. Like, 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 and that Earth song made people fucked up. Because when you rewind the shit and all the shit start coming back to life. I don't like being put on the spot like that. I won't do mine, though. I thought this whole new video song. You think that was off? Yeah, that was tough. But we yeah, we could have put it in a different category. That would have made it easier, though. Yeah, you know what I mean? I just, you know, that just popped in my mind. It's a Kid, okay, a song that's crazy. Much music is out. Cause on some hush, I wouldn't see a goddamn ride with some players. Goddamn Sammy Sam. Oh, mm, that was my favorite song of all time. 
Oh, I, I miss mystical, man. Oh. Here yeah, I go. go. Wow. Oh, yeah. I can listen go. to the beat all day. That's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shit, I ain't even put no finger in mine, nigga. I would have to take that. That's UGK murder. Oh, man. UGK murder. That's my name. 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 I was like, we going to trap. And every every verse that nigga came in, boy, case, I'm down in New Orleans with my auntie and my granny. Uh -huh. Inside of this Mr. Big family. Yeah. They know I'm on the run, so I can't use the phone. My motherfucking babies, they don't even know I'm gone. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, nigga, that's shit. getting cold. Shit. That shit was Space hard. Age Pimpin'. Oh. Y'all mm. love that one. What? Mm. God damn. I be obliged if you step outside. Yeah. That's the first time in black oh, history that a nigga been obliged. <laughs> Hold up, hold up. MJG is the first black man to openly be allowed to be a blind. Man. Man, I'm about, I'm about they, you know what they'll do to a nigga who was a blind? <laughs> Cut your feet off, man. I'm about to get back on my ATL shit. Huh? Nigga don't forget about the young blood. Damn. Wow. You don't give a damn, we don't give a fuck. Damn, I'm a hit. Mm -hmm. I love that. That shit don't never go out. Mm -hmm. That's a hard hit to me. Oh, you doing Cadillac like Pimper, yeah. <laughs> The young blood. Well, come on. They win. They, they kept that ball. They ball. Was they part of the? Was they part of the dungeon? You keeping the HR? I say goddamn kilo. No, kilo. 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 The pins. You don't remember the pins? See, I don't remember the pins, uh, but I, I know kilo though. Love in the mouth. Boy, I'm old, uh, uh, boy, uh, his own, white boy, white boy, his own, and that's no lizard. But he's go crazy. He's talking yeah. a lot of shit, though, nigga. Yeah, he did. I thought we would keep the HR for a right. second, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, he kept that shit for real. Man. Only you, you, you know how to you were. You were. So I think Young Blood was putting out a slanging song. Oh, it was. They was. They was. They was. They was. They was. You were. You were with everything. That shit that happened when nigga you get down there and slammed up and nigga get slammed up. Yup, nigga put on this shit. Mm. You were. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. That's a wrestling move. It was. It was. It was. It was our first like you know what I'm saying sound effect. <laughs> that was That's MVP for everything, boy. Hit that nigga like, you win. <laughs> <laughs> and then you went right after yeah, that. Right. You went you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you man, I remember when like Atlanta, like real slang slang. That was our little brother, man. They was up in the attic. Shit, we was in the dungeon. Right. You know what I'm talking about? Attic crew. Cool. Yeah, for no so man. We sit here with y'all niggas forever, forever. Man, man, shit, man. Man, 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 Got man, to. we appreciate the goddamn the love. Bro, we so gotta ask you this gotta, one more thing know. before you go though, because we comedians and shit, and you always be um on the boondocks, funny as hell. <laughs> Bro, I wanted to be a comedian. That was what I thought I could do if I yeah. tried. You know what I'm saying? You feel me? Yeah. I love to make people laugh. Right. This one of my favorite things to do. You can tell from the video, like yeah. that, that freak video, nigga. When you niggas, we got I mean, that. <laughs> I ain't thought nobody was gonna take me shit. I thought they were gonna have me a little tripping, man. I love that nigga. That's crazy. Yeah, that's man. all I thought it would be. You know yeah, right. Freedom, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's what y'all represent, man. The sure. freedom to be who you are, man. Thank y'all, brothers. Yeah, I appreciate y'all. You were. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, New face always on the case. You know he is. Y'all always welcome to come holler at us. Come on, man. Welcome. Yeah, man. 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 Yeah, man
Yeah, that was amazing, man. Thank you, man. OG. So proud, man. I've been listening to y'all too, man. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. You appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, you called out and gave me. You said it. Love. Love. OG. Come on, man. Cool. That's the one that you did too. I'm going old school, man. Say they got that mic on me. Oh, you gonna go crazy when you see this shit. I got a 45 minute drive. Yes, sir. And I gotta make sure that my dogs ain't pee inside. Cause I know they did, I'ma like that. Why you cry? Oh shit, tell you lie. When I took you out the first time, you act like you ain't have to slide. So damn, now I come home, gotta pick up the shit. Got down with the dog and beat, huh? I don't really give a fuck what's up. Fuck's gonna be good. Put the dog out. Straight. <laughs> okay. Okay. Hey. Yeah. Oh shit. This nigga DC got my knees burning. New face. What you bring us, man? Let's get in here. Every time we try to come out and do something positive, they don't want to help. They be like, black people not gonna support that bullshit. Go to the go to the website. 85apparel.com. Say it again. 85apparel.com. Man, put it on the screen. You know what I mean? And I know my accent a little heavy when I say a pearl. It's not a U in it. A pearl. You know how to fucking spell. A pearl. Go get some a pearl. Go get some a pearl. Sick of this shit, man. Shit. Every day. Man, Do another hat. Man, let me get a hat. Yeah, let man. Let me what, get that hat. What's up, man? Take that off. When the 4X gonna be in? Yeah, man. Where you mad? Y'all ain't got nothing for babies. Uh, man, what the we, fuck? When y'all gonna get some ones? Yeah, I know, man. Cut some of this man, shit out. Man, buy the shit we got. So yeah. we have to save it for your baby. That nigga gonna grow up one day. He gonna want this. I'm tired of telling them. Me bro. too, I'm man. I'm just gonna start wearing all the shit myself. I wear it every day anyway. I like it. Me too. It's nice. It's nice quality. Man. Everything. Know. You know what I mean? That shit is soft, man. It's made out of hoodie material. Yep. Even the pants. The we got hoodie. sweatpants made out of hoodie material. Come on, man. Dude, and it ain't like this ain't no knockoff shit. You can wash you can wash this right. and wait. It ain't like, gonna fade it's or nothing. The same. Better than that shit you used to. We making sure. Bro, I had this hoodie for the whole five years. Yeah, I know. Look, still bright. All the way. And niggas don't know how to wash clothes good, so it's not because we have a good washing routine. Bro, it's just we got the shit all is nice. the nigga colors. We got black, we got red, we got blue, we got we got some pink shit for the girls. White socks, roller tray, lighters. Man, what else they want us to come out with? I, I better mean, add, I guess, because we gotta keep doing these motherfuckers. I'm about to call LL Cool J. Right. I'm about to pay somebody else to do this I shit. I know, right? Get that nigga to roll his pants leg up one bro, time. I don't know what they want me to do. Everybody who come through here get some of this dope ass shit and be like, I like that shit. Yeah, it's nice. It's thick. It's cool. Hey, man, what, why that hat cost that much? Nigga, we don't own no factory. We had to cut a deal. We got to make some money off this shit, too. Exactly. I don't understand why y'all Nigga, just don't... even the tag in our shit is better. It say 80, it's imprinted on it. So a motherfucker can't say... You know, like Biggie said, they go to nigga with the fake eyes. You ain't got to worry about that. It's real. It's our shit. Our shit is real. Man, that's what I'm saying. You got to get our shit. Because when we see y'all with the shit that ain't our like shit. We don't know how much the shit they be buying costs. Right. Our shit don't even cost don't that. Don't even cost that much. Man. I had somebody send me a DM saying, hey, man, it's an 85 South Shows hoodie I'm marking up for y'all. What you think? I think you need to get that shit the fuck out of my page. The bootlegger sent you the shit that they was bootlegging? Fuck, you gonna get me to approve some bootleg shit. Taking food out of my kid's mouth. Right. With my idea. Right. Wow. Motherfuckers. Buy some of this shit, man. Okay? It's Christmas time. We ain't gonna see the money till April anyway. Just go ahead and get some of this shit. I don't know what else to tell them. 